Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Top military experts just discovered North Korea's secret weapon that could destroy America want to hear some no good, awful, really bad news? Well, the latest comes from the regime of North Korea. This is so devastating and cringeworthy that many jaws will be left hanging in a matter of seconds. Are you ready? Brace yourself. Two experts just went before Congress and said Kim Jong-un's rogue dictatorship can perform an EMP attack in the U.S. that would wipe out, yes, wipe out minus 90% of the population within one year. A preemptive nuke strike must be considered. From Daily Wire Two EMP experts warned Congress on Thursday that North Korea is capable of executing an EMP attack over the United States which would send the U.S. back to the Stone Age and would lead to the deaths of 90% of all Americans within one year. Chairman Dr. William R. Graham and Chief of Staff Dr. Peter Vincent Pry of the Commission to Assess the Threat to the United States from Electromagnetic Pulse EMP, Attack told the Committee on Homeland Security that the U.S. is now facing a doomsday scenario as U.S. intelligence under the Obama administration grossly underestimated the capabilities of North Korea. Former NASA rocket scientist James Oberg visited North Korea's Sohi Space Launch Base, witnessed elaborate measures undertaken to conceal space launch payloads, and concludes in a 2017 article that the EMP threat from North Korea's satellites should be taken seriously. There have been fears expressed that North Korea might use a satellite to carry a small nuclear warhead into orbit and then detonate it over the United States for an EMP strike. These concerns seem extreme and require an astronomical scale of irrationality on the part of the regime. The most frightening aspect, I've come to realize, is that exactly such a scale of insanity is now evident in the rest of their space program. Holy cow! Barack Obama left this mess. Now Donald Trump has to clean it all up. But he will. Career killer what Robert De Niro just did to the president will make everyone stop watching him. At this point, so many of the Hollywood elite celebrities have made it clear that they do not want Trump supporters watching their movies. Now we get to add Robert De Niro to that list. De Niro, a longtime friend of sexual assaulter Harvey Weinstein, had some sort of crazy breakdown on stage during the annual Hudson River Park Gala where he started trembling about benches then blew up on Trump. One of my pleasures will be keeping people off my bench who don't deserve a view of the park like Donald Trump. FKU, Donald Trump. It's a horror with this mother of er. Now. The reason that he was talking about park benches in the first place was that the gala was thrown to celebrate them dedicating park bench to De Niro. I guess he thinks he can ban people from sitting on it? He is so wrong. In fact, I think it would be pretty funny if some Trump supporters in MAGA hats went and visited the Hudson River Park, located at 353 West Street, New York, New York 10014, and take some pictures on De Niro's beloved bench. Oh, and while we're at it, let's quit watching his junky movies anyways. No big loss there. Help share this out and let's get back at Robert De Niro. After all of Hollywood attacked Trump, Jimmy Fallon stood up and did a total reversal. Just when it seemed like everyone in Hollywood had lost their minds with blind hate for President Donald Trump, Jimmy Fallon decided to fight back against the insanity. In an interview on NBC's Sunday Today, Fallon was asked why he doesn't make fun of the president more to get higher ratings like Colbert and Kimmel are getting on their shows. He looked back at the show house and sharply responded, It's just not what I do. Fallon went on to explain himself, saying, I think it would be weird for me to start doing it now. I don't really even care that much about politics. I've got to be honest. I love pop culture more than I love politics.
I'm just not that brain. Of course, he also complimented the success and political humor of Colbert, saying it's what he has always been good at anyways. However, it was notable that he did not compliment Jimmy Kimmel for his recently found success in political jokes. My guess is it's because Kimmel is not funny and just going out as the new poster boy of the Democrat establishment. I'm just glad to see there is at least one big comedian left out there who has real jokes instead of the 24-7 Trump bashing. Let's show Fallon America appreciates his professionalism by sharing this out, and watching The Tonight Show sometime. David Clark unleashes epic rant about Bill and Hillary's sexual assault scandals. David Clark knows why Hillary Clinton took five days to condemn her buddy Harvey Weinstein. According to the sheriff, she doesn't care. Her politics matters more to her, the reputation of her husband, to prop him up in the White House for her future political endeavors was more important to her than these victims, Clark said on Fox News this morning. She's morally bankrupt. Her ethics elevator has no bottom floor, and she will do whatever she has to do to protect herself, her image, and her reputation. Of course, the sheriff is right. Earlier this week, Clinton called Trump a sexual assaulter during an overseas interview. When asked about similar accusations against her husband, Clinton claimed that they were in the past. What hypocrisy! We're fortunate Clinton never became the first woman president. We deserve a female leader who respects women, not one who uses them. And, like Clark says, Clinton doesn't care. She only cares about herself. Comment Clintons don't care. And share if you agree with Clark. The couple is despicable as they are power hungry. George Lopez trashed Trump last night, then suddenly gets crushed by the Trump curse. George Lopez is like many of his peer in Hollywood and suffers from Trump derangement syndrome. This is a mental disorder that causes hateful feelings and violent thoughts about the sitting president of the United States. Watch him get booed off state so hard, y'all. This is why you don't mess with Trump nation. Christ Palandy was there and tweeted out about the event and later took it down. Big controversy, host of huge charity hashtag carousel ball, at George Elipez, makes political comments about Trump, drops the F-bomb and is escorted out. Chris Parenti, at Chris Parenti, October 8, 2017. The tables at the event cost $5,000 to $100,000 to benefit the Barbara Davis Center for Diabetes. George was asked nicely to stop making Trump jokes by a man in front row, Mafi who just donated $250,000. George doesn't, continues, gets booed. He bombed his set and was immediately escorted from the carousel ball. Please share this with every Trump supporter you know. Let's send a message to these limousine liberals that we are tired of their opinions. IT worked after last week protests, SNL just did something nobody thought they ever would. In case y'all were wondering if all that protesting of crappy liberal TV shows works, now we know IT does. Last week Saturday Night Live decided to not make jokes about sex offender Harvey Weinstein because they were all friends. Not anymore. Thanks to all of you folks out there, this weekend they finally broke down and attacked their boss's best friend. Now, now, we have the video to watch, but I want to give y'all a heads up first. They only make fun of Weinstein for about two seconds, mildly, before turning their attention to dot you guessed it dot President Trump. But wait, there is more. The show was so moved by how y'all responded to their defense of the sexual predator, they went on the attack again. They did another skit, throwing a bit more shade at Harvey Weinstein where they had a panel of pretend actresses talking about their experiences being harassed by Weinstein and other producers. Well, at least it's a start. Still, there is no erasing the moment after last week's SNL cast party when the owner of the show, Lorne Michaels, 
told a reporter on camera that he would not attack Weinstein because it's a New York thing. The liberals may love to hide behind their double standards but we can stop them. Help share this out and show everyone we can beat them at their own game.